Here's the final product. You can see that there's the Raspberry Pi camera right there, and that's the MLX 90621 heat sensor. Uh, and these little M2 hex bolts are attaching the one piece of acrylic to the back with some M2 nuts. And then this is actually hinged. It's not supposed to move. That's just there for rigidity. Um, and then these are the mounting holes that will attach it so that this can rotate um, probably around 90 degrees. You'll notice too that the um, flex ribbon has been, is flexing because this Raspberry Pi camera has been pulled away from the board. That was really important to get the heat sensor right next to the um, camera so that they had a very similar sort of field of view with each other. That's probably some of the most detailed work I've done with acrylic so far. All right, so here's how I created this holder. I used Fusion 360. You can see that the camera is supposed to be mounted below the spindle holder. Um, I made this bracket a while ago. Uh, it's made out of aluminum, and then this is just gonna be an acrylic plate. The camera will be mounted on some kind of linear slider. Uh, I don't exactly know the final design of it, but what I do know is that I need it to pivot uh, underneath. And so we got a pretty good design for it here. And I'll show you what you do is um, you bring it into your overall main drawing as a single component. So I just turned it off. Uh, let me show you that component by itself components right here so you make it as its own sort of independent file with Fusion 360 and uh, you can see all the detail you know it's really important where you're going to kind of get these these hex uh, machine screws uh, or I guess machine bolts. Um, I also wanted to add this field of view uh, sort of trapezoid so I could really make sure that based on the degrees that were available to me, that I, I had enough sort of overlap or centering. Uh, I'm not, it's not perfectly centered in the Raspberry Pi camera field of view, but I think it's close enough that it will work. Okay, so then when you wanna actually go mill this out, by the way, as you're designing it, you almost do need to keep in mind the width um, or sort of the thickness of your acrylic. Now I considered 3D printing, but I'm never all that thrilled with the accuracy I get off of 3D printing, and I like working with acrylic better, so that's why I went with that approach. The cool part about milling is you make a new project inside um, Fusion 360 and you simply pull in your actual component. Um, but once you pull it in here, you can turn off a lot of components. So for instance, I have the actual camera board turned off and I have the heat sensor turned off. And you take the actual acrylic pieces 
and you rotate them to lay them flat. The reason this is really cool is that if you change the design of these, so for instance, I had to go back and add these little these little jut out areas so I got perfectly um, square corners because you can, otherwise you'd end up with like a little inner fillet. Um, and so you go back to the original design, you adjust it in here, and then when you come back over here, it's uh, perfectly laid out with your flat layout, which is ready for your milling job. So once you've got everything sort of laid out correctly, so that you're using the smallest amount of acrylic, you go over to the cam and you set up your first operation. Now you'll notice that the stock piece that I set up is the same height because I'm not going to have to actually mill the height. It's all 4.2 millimeter. Uh, it's just the, um, you know, this, these outer sides that I'm going to be milling around. The other important part is setting up your XYZ origin right here. By the way, when you want to go do that setup, you just go into edit and you um, tell it what your your origin point is. Right? So like for instance, if I turn that off, I can pick it again. So you just kind of pick that as your origin location. Um, and then actually now that I did that, well that I think I just screwed it up. I'll hit cancel. Um, let me make sure that that is set up correctly. Yeah, it's still, that's your X and your Y and then your Z is pointing up. Um, and then I'll show you the simulation of that milling job. Um, right, so you're just kind of going in and you saw that earlier in the video. Uh, and that's again using that 1 16th uh, end mill. Uh, it's leaving tabs so that those little pieces don't come out. I found that those tabs are really important. I did a whole bunch of jobs in my earlier days where I didn't leave tabs and found that I would screw the piece up right at the end because it wasn't being held down. Those are pretty easy to break off at the end too. So you want to do them just small enough that they break off cleanly by hand. The, uh, the next part then is this setup. You'll notice I have one, two, three, for five setups that will give me five g-code files and I'll run all of those as different operations but this setup is over here and it's just to drill this one hole right here so not a not a very big g-code file but kind of a pain that you've got to go and rotate your little workpiece in the vise um, that's where I then start thinking 3d printing would be way nicer uh, but I still was kind of considering the trade-offs of the accuracy. So for this one, notice that the origin is right there on this corner. And so once that's rotated in the vise, you know, that's going to be the front of the piece. And then this side, um, that's my origin right there on that corner. And just kind of a this was this was really scary because the end mill would get right up next to the metal. And so if you actually look, sorry, the metal of the vise. So if you actually look at the way I set up the job, uh, and I run this simulation, um, I had it leave some about 0.1 millimeter of material right here, just to make sure it didn't get that close. And the, you know, on that 3040 I have, you really do get that kind of accuracy. Uh, so I thought that was pretty good and that did end up working out perfectly fine for me and then uh, the last one is just the other side of that thanks for watching and go create your own cool stuff with chili pepper and post some videos so we can watch yours